Squawk Market Master phoning in from Sao Paulo, Brazil this morning. Mark Farber is editor and publisher of the Gloom, Doom, and Ooh. Gloom, Boom, and Doom report. And he joins us on the phone. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, Americans are waking up to see front page of a lot of newspapers, if they read at least financial newspapers, that the gold ETF is now bigger than the spider ETF, which mimics the S&P 500. Should people be buying gold at this point? What do you think about gold as an investment? Well, I'm not certain that people should buy gold today because we had a huge run in precious metals recently, and I think they need to consolidate or uh, shake out the weak holders. So I would expect a correction in gold to occur. But I think that everybody should have some gold if he wants to own some cash because gold is the most honest form of cash people can uh, own. You're very specific that ownership of physical gold is what's important. What do you mean by that? Is the gold ETF ownership of physical gold? Well, it's a claim on physical gold, but I prefer if investors hold physical gold in a safe deposit box ideally outside the U.S. in various locations, Switzerland, Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, Canada. Why outside Why? the United States? Why? Well, I think it's important in today's very uncertain world to diversify not only the various asset classes, in other words, equities, bonds, gold, cash, real estate, commodities, but also the custody of your assets should be in different jurisdictions. Do, do, you, do you thus not trust U.S. banks or U.S. custodians? You think they might I fail don't trust and abscond anyone. with the gold? <laughs> I don't trust anyone. Huh, interesting. What about, uh, you know, we have such an equity-centric audience. How much downside risk is there in equities right now? Do you think there's much, or are we going to get the Bernanke put? Well, I think we can rally here somewhat uh, around the 1100 level on the S&P. We probably hold for a while. But I think the momentum on the downside was such from the May too high when the S&P reached 1370 to the recent low at 1101 on the S&P. That significant upside is extremely limited. Now, if someone comes to me and says, look, I'm invest an investor for the next 10 years. Should I buy U.S. Treasuries, 10-year notes, or 30-year bonds, or equities? I would tell him to buy equities. But nearer term, for the next six months or so, I think the markets in the world will go lower. Mark, Mark do you think we're in a recession right now? I think we never really came out of the recession in many different sectors of the economy. In some sectors we came out. And then if you look at the world, the emerging world has continued to grow throughout the period 2008 up to today. There is a slowdown now occurring in emerging economies, but the Western world, Western Europe and the US, there's hardly any growth. And if you look back, say, 1999 to today, mm. the U.S. as an economy, macroeconomically speaking, is of course much worse off than in 1999. So what are the prospects of... Courtesy of the Federal Reserve, I may add. What, what are the prospects for changing that picture going forward to get some significant growth in Western Europe and the United States? Well, I mean, if I look at the politicians both in Europe and the U.S., I don't think that the prospect is very good. And if I also look at the entitlement system, I think, and the government expenditures and the fiscal deficits and the debt overhang, I think for the next 10 years we'll have very muted growth in the Western world and standards of living for the average household will continue to decline. I assume you, you, you think that the U.S. economy, the Western economies are worse off, you said, because of monetary policy, what the Federal Reserve has done in debasing. What, I, I'm 
I'm putting words in your mouth, and forgive me for doing that, in, in reducing the value of the, of the, of the currency. Let me, let me go back to something you mentioned a moment ago, and that was the importance of diversification, uh, particularly if you don't trust anything in particular. Uh, how would you diversify, if you're designing a portfolio for me or for your, your sister or brother, what would it consist of today, percentage by percentage? Well, I mean, I don't know your personal conditions, whether you're married, whether you have children, how many girlfriends you have, and so forth and so on. But say for a typical He's doing household, really well. I would say... <laughs> really well. Should... I got some big overhead, Mark. <laughs> but go well, ahead. I mean, we don't know. I mean, these are very important sure, matters because sure. it leads to a huge cash flow drain if you have many girlfriends. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, listen, I know. I, I write some big hey, checks. Hey, Mark, speaking, of, speaking of the girlfriend issue, can I, can I just it's ask you to, to uh, I need more gold. More gold. address more gold, gold for the girlfriends, right? Exactly. Right? That's the, that's how you One question cash. that you raise in your, in your report, should we be buying morality futures at this point? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I think that in general, one of the reasons one cannot be overly optimistic about equities is if you go back to the period 1982, when the market bottomed out in August 82, up to say year 2000, investors kind of worldwide trusted the regulators, they trusted the system, and they were enthusiastic about owning equities. Over the last 10 years, the mood has changed a lot. Investors and individuals in particular, individual investors, they don't trust management anymore. They are upset about executive compensation and they have no view about that. They are upset about the regulators. They think the markets are rigged and they are upset about the rating agencies. There is a distrust in paper. And I think a lot of individuals will not come back to the share market, and on rebounds, they will reduce their positions. Hmm. Mark Farber? But coming back to your questions about the asset allocation, yes. yeah, go ahead. I would hold 25 to 30 percent in equities, 20 to 30 percent in physical gold. Mm -hmm. I would own some bonds and cash, mm -hmm. and I would own, say, 25 to 30 percent in real estate, which people could own by owning, say, Asian real estate companies, including REITs. How is the Asian economy? Uh, do you say, I, I, I'm remembering that you live in Hong Kong, or did. I actually live on airplanes, but uh, normally, uh, if I'm not traveling, I'm in the north of Thailand. Mm -hmm. But I used to live 30 years in Hong Kong, and I right. have an office in Hong Kong. But how do you see Asia's economy now? Everybody seems, or many people seem concerned about China's slowing. Yes. Some people will tell you that China will crash, possible that some sectors in the economy will crash, and other people are very positive about China or complacent. Nobody knows precisely. We have a, new, a number of problems in China. We also have a misallocation of resources and so forth. But I'm in Brazil today. All I can tell you that in emerging economies, whether it's Brazil, Russia, or the Middle East, or India, or China, or Thailand, or Indonesia, the individual household is not highly leveraged. Mm. Mortgage debt as a percent of the economy is very low. So you don't have the debt overhang we have in the Western world. And sure, China can have a slowdown, and that's why I would rather not own industrial commodities that would get hit very badly if China went into recession. Mm -hmm. Mark? But equally, we can have a recession in China for two years and thereafter we'll recover. Mark, speaking of uh, leverage and mortgages, there's a lot of debate about the U.S. banks and whether or not they are a buy here. Any thoughts on that? I personally am not interested in financial stocks because I'm in the financial sector. The only exception to that is banks in Asia are reasonably sound because they never went and dabbled in all kinds of Greek bonds and Portuguese bonds and so forth and so on. And we had a horrendous crisis in 97, 98, 
And following that crisis, we had a period of 10 years during which there was deleveraging. So the banks in Asia are reasonably sound. I wouldn't necessarily buy them today as a trade. I think they may move lower along with the markets. Mm -hmm. But in general, if I looked at financial stocks, I would look at banks in emerging economies in India, in Thailand, and possibly at some point in China, but not yet. Mark Farber, thanks so much for joining us. Always, on, always a pleasure, usually on the phone today from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thank you very much.